This show is brought to you by Taka's Q1 net profit hits $3.15 billion, and Egypt sells a 9.5% stake in Telecom Egypt. You're watching The Daily Brief with Forbes, I'm Ramia Faraj. Abu Dhabi national energy company Taka posted Q1 net profit of $3.15 billion, compared to $514.7 million in Q1 2022. It was mainly driven by a one-off gain of $2.94 billion on the transfer of a 5% stake in Adnock Gas. Net income excluding these one-off items was $520 million. Group revenues hit $3.57 billion, up 6% year-on-year. Revenue from oil and gas fell, but revenue from power and water rose during the quarter. Egypt has sold a 9.5% stake in state-owned telecom Egypt, raising $122.3 million from the share sale. Selling state assets is part of Egypt's economic reform program. Egypt plans to offer a further 0.5% for the company employees to purchase. Book building for the offering of Telecom Egypt shares, in which the government owns an 80% stake, started late last week. Telecom Egypt saw a net profit of nearly $300 million in 2022, a 9% year-on-year rise driven by strong operational performance. Kuwaiti Mobile Telecom, Zane Group and Omani Telecom provider Omantel have launched a JV that will become the Middle East premier international wholesale services provider. Zane Omantel International will manage all international wholesale requirements of Zane and Omantel operations in eight countries, serving over 55 million customers. Zane will hold 74% of the JV share capital, while Omantel will own the remaining 26%. Official Officials say the JV will optimize the existing wholesale businesses of both companies by cutting operating costs and boosting competitiveness. Turkey is bracing today for its first election runoff after a night of high drama showed President Erdogan edging ahead of his secular rival but failing to secure a first round win. Erdogan sounded triumphant as he emerged before a sea of supporters shortly after midnight to proclaim himself ready to lead the nation for another five years. A runoff vote would take place on May 28th. The weekend gathering of finance chiefs from the G7 revealed China will be a focus of this week's summit in Hiroshima. The meeting with Brazil, the Comoros, India, Indonesia, Singapore and South Korea over the weekend tackled issues including high-level infrastructure investment to counter China's Belt and Road Initiative. Japan persuaded its G7 counterparts to launch a new program to diversify supply chains away from China by the end of this year. The G7 is also expected to tighten sanctions on Russia this week. Australian mining company Newcrest has agreed to a takeover by U.S. rival Newmont, creating a world-leading gold producer in a deal worth $19 billion. By taking over Newcrest, the U.S. mining giant will cement its position as the world's biggest gold producer, with operations extending across North and South America, Africa, Australia and Papua New Guinea. Officials say the combined group will have an industry-leading portfolio with a multi-decade gold and copper production profile in the world's most favorable mining jurisdictions. And Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 smashed the competition for the second straight weekend in North American theaters. It earned $60.5 million for a global haul topping half a billion dollars. Guardians unseated the Super Mario Bros. movie from the top spot last week, but the video game-based Mario, which has now earned more than $1.2 billion worldwide, remained firmly in second spot this weekend, taking in $13 million in North America. I'm Ramia Faraj. This is The Daily Brief. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.